the devil's own backyard they called it they wasn't telling no lie people on the bottom of the chalahoochee river still there to verify gambling houses and some pleasant places on both sides of the street the soldiers came from fort Benning, georgia to this playground of retreat anything went down in phoenix city do whatever turned you on the women grow pretty down in phoenix city used to get me one for a song phoenix city alabama that's my old Death stalked the sidewalks down in Phoenix City. The law, they just turned their heads. And when darkness fell down there on Phoenix City, the safest place was home and bed. But the good people down there in Phoenix City, they all stood up and had their say. With dynamite and some nitroglycerin, they nearly blew the town away. Welcome to a captivating journey through the bygone years of Phoenix City, Alabama, a city steeped in history and mystery. In this video, we'll delve into the darker chapters of Phoenix City's past during the mid-1950s, accompanied by the evocative music that echoed through those tumultuous times. Join us as we explore the rich tapestry of this southern city, where history and melody intertwine to tell a tale that lingers in the shadows. Let the music of the era guide you through the captivating narrative of Phoenix City's intriguing history. If you like what you see, please consider liking, sharing and subscribing for future videos like this and more. And thank you for watching. There was a time when casinos were plentiful in one Alabama town. People came from all over the United States to stay in the town's hotels and spend money everywhere they turned. Even the local churches had their mortgages paid off by the casinos. Many people support casino gambling as a way for Alabama to pump tens of millions of dollars into the state's ailing budgets. Many point to the jobs casinos would create. Others say people should simply be free to spend their money on gambling if they so choose. This story is not meant to take issue with any of those viewpoints. However, this story will focus on the opinions of some people who lived in Phoenix City when casinos lined the streets. These people share a largely unreported perspective on how gambling impacts a community. Setting the scene. Phoenix City is the nicest place in the world to live. You couldn't find trouble here today if you was looking for it, natives and historians say. Now, in the 50s and before, you could find anything you wanted. Standing along 5th Avenue, near 14th Street. The storefronts surrounding the area are mostly boarded up. Weeds invade lots where businesses used to operate. Until 1954, many of those storefronts were merely a cover for backroom casinos and brothels. Everybody knew what was going on, they had the doors open, had the music going, and had the girls standing on the sidewalk enticing soldiers to come in. They had little stools where the children could stand on there and play slot machines. The casinos hid behind relatively discreet names such as Bama Club. One was made to look like a grocery store. Only there were no groceries for sale. Casinos catered largely to soldiers from across the river at Fort Benning in Georgia. The booze flowed, and the women worked their magic, and before long, the soldier had lost all his money. It used to be called Little Chicago or Sin City, noting that the casino life did not have much of a direct impact on people unless they got involved with casino businessmen. 
You never saw any problems whatsoever, although we knew some of the things was happening. How it worked. The casinos were not exactly legal. But politicians and law enforcement simply looked the other way. Long ago, they had agreed to tolerate backroom casinos in order to help pay the bills in the city. Even the mortgages of some local churches were paid by the casinos. Central High School needed uniforms? Band uniforms? They didn't have drives or have to go out and sell cookies. They'd go down and make a request from some of the people down there, and we'd have brand new uniforms. It was part of it. It was an accepted thing. It was an accepted way of life. A push for change. But someone was unwilling to play the game. Albert Patterson, an attorney and staunch gambling opponent, moved his family to Phoenix City. He took issue with the acceptance of casinos and brothels and began collecting evidence against casino bosses. In 1954, despite massive efforts from casino operators to derail his campaign, Patterson won the Democratic nomination for Alabama Attorney General. His platform was to clean up his adopted hometown. He never got the chance. Patterson worked late on Friday night, June 18, 1854, in a few days, he was scheduled to share evidence against casino bosses. But as Patterson walked to his car outside his office, a gunman came from out of the darkness and shot Patterson three times, killing him. One of the bullets was a symbolic shot in the mouth. For years and years and years, the state politicians had been bought off by the local mafia, and they thought it'd just be swept under the rug. And for a while, they were right. A half-hearted investigation was followed by files mysteriously disappearing. In the days after the shooting, it was clear the Phoenix City establishment was more relieved than disturbed by the assassination. Politicians as far away as Montgomery were unmotivated to find the killer. But federal authorities were taking note of the rampant corruption in Phoenix City and Alabama. Before long, martial law was declared, and the National Guard was in town raiding casinos and tearing up slot machines. People scattered from Phoenix City like wild. Residents recalled. They had over a thousand prostitutes that left town immediately when they was closing these places down. A culture of corruption. Eventually, Russell County Chief Deputy Albert Fuller was convicted of the murder of Albert Patterson. Fuller's connection to the death and allegations surrounding other state and local officials reflect what people like call a culture of corruption that surrounded the gambling industry. Patterson's son, John, later became the state's attorney general and even served as governor. Recently, he spoke with the Alabama Policy Institute about the public servants who targeted his father. All of the people that had anything to do with killing him, from that night on, lived miserable and wretched lives and died young, Patterson said. They really, truly paid for what they did. Patterson's advice for people considering casinos today? You don't want that in your town, he emphatically said. No, you don't. A fair comparison? Some people compare the Phoenix City of the 1950s to modern-day Montgomery. A federal grand jury is looking into the relationships between casino operators and legislators. A handful of lawmakers from across the state have gone public with allegations of bribes offered in exchange for supporting casinos. Some does not agree with comparing the Phoenix City of the past with the Montgomery of today. But he did describe an undercurrent of corruption that he believes goes hand-in-hand -hand with gambling. It's got some good areas, but it's not enough to offset the bad areas, it's like smoking. It gives you enjoyment when you puff it. But it affects everybody around you, and you'll end up sick as a dog. The events of the past proved to him that a town cannot have gambling without having corruption. You don't do anything but punish your family and yourself. It can't come to any good. What happened next? Shine a light on a rat, a rat's going to run for cover, I don't care if it's city hall or the city dump. You know, a rat's going to run. With casino bosses fleeing Phoenix City in the wake of National Guard raids, the town worked quickly to earn a new reputation. Phoenix City, Alabama, named in 1955 an All-America City, went from the wickedest city in America in 1954, cleaned up, 1955 to All-America City. Today, the town has roughly the same population as it did in the early 1950s. Visitors would only find the old storefronts that served as casinos if they really knew where to look. 
Frankly, there does not seem to be much in the way of economic opportunity. Columbus, Georgia, directly across the Chattahoochee River from Phoenix City, seems to have more recent development. But that is fine with people and model citizens, even if new casinos were to come in and renovate downtown, he would just as soon pass on the opportunity. Gambling, he said, simply costs too much.